Brittany sat in the cafe, discreetly observing the couple at the neighboring table. At first glance, they seemed like an ordinary pair, stopping for a snack during a stroll. However, Brittany couldn't help noticing the unnatural smile on the girl and the overly relaxed posture of the man, which contradicted his piercing gaze. She recognized the man even before seeing his face. He had changed, lost weight, grown a beard, perhaps just to hide his still somewhat chubby cheeks that refused to go away with age. His unruly blonde locks had been neatly trimmed and styled into a fashionable haircut. His appearance bore no resemblance to the young programmer with a burning ambition to revolutionize the digital world as he was 20 years ago. Brittany shifted her gaze to the girl. Well, Jake, it seems your tastes haven't changed at all, Brittany smirked. The girl was very slim, with minimal makeup. Brittany suspected it was expensive and expertly applied. She had a luxurious chestnut mane of hair, carefully styled into a beautiful hairstyle. The phone on the table emitted a soft sound. Mom, sorry, just wait a little longer. There's a huge traffic jam at the junction, can't even find a way around it. No worries, I'm not in a hurry, Brittany replied, typing out a response and smiling. Her son, despite his sharp mind, good memory, and quick decision-making skills, always managed to be late. Even if he left significantly earlier, he would inevitably encounter some situation that delayed him, traffic jams, transportation breakdowns, unexpected requests from strangers that he couldn't refuse. Brittany ordered another coffee and turned her attention back to the couple at the next table. The man remained in the same relaxed posture, but the girl was no longer hiding her irritation. She gestured desperately, showed something on her phone, and occasionally pointed disdainfully at her order. Finally, seemingly in despair, she jumped up, dramatically pulled out several bills from her purse, and with a look of complete disdain, tossed them onto the table. Brittany thought the girl had initially wanted to throw them in her companion's face, but changed her mind at the last moment. Brittany smiled again. It seems Jake's principles haven't changed over the years, unlike himself. She hadn't seen him in 20 years. They had parted on bad terms, and initially, Brittany had tried to arrange meetings with him, but he had signed a new contract and left abroad again. The birth of her son pushed her feelings for Jake to the back burner, and eventually, she forgot about him altogether. But one day, several years later, a social media algorithm kindly presented his photo in the You May Know section. Curiosity got the better of her, and Brittany visited his profile. There were only two photos, Jake against some bay with skyscrapers in the background, and a wedding photo. His new wife's appearance was predictable, a slim girl with chestnut hair. Lost in her thoughts, Brittany didn't realize she was openly staring at the man. Her curiosity didn't escape his notice. He too began to scrutinize the woman looking at him with interest. Realizing her lapse, Brittany smiled slightly to assure the man she wasn't embarrassed by her scrutiny and shifted her gaze to her coffee cup. She wasn't afraid of being recognized. Over 20 years, her appearance had undergone significant changes. Instead of the slim brunette with long tousled hair, she was now a slightly fuller blonde with a longer bob. Such women had never interested Jake. At this moment, Brittany was sure he would immediately lose interest in the woman staring at him. However, whether out of boredom or a desire to unsettle the woman who had turned her attention to him, Jake continued to look at Brittany. He even turned to face her directly, leaning against the wall next to his table. Don't waste your time, Jake, Brittany thought, amused. I know your preferences too well to fall for your interested gaze. She took a sip from her cup and glanced at him again. He was still looking at her. Suddenly, mischievous thought crossed her mind. Well, Jake, want to play a staring game? Let's play. Brittany smiled. The man smiled back, 
clearly indicating his interest and openness to getting acquainted. Oh, Jake, Jake. Brittany began to behave like a woman intrigued by a man. Fleeting glances from under lowered lashes, a mysterious smile, everything signaled that she was open to further closeness. Any other woman in my place would have believed you liked her. But I know what you're thinking about me right now. A chubby lady thinking she can interest practically any man with her curves. Ha ha. To solidify her impression and to amuse herself with the conflicting emotions Jake's expression betrayed, Brittany got up and sauntered towards the lady's room, behaving like a flirtatious woman, swaying her hips leisurely. There, she stopped in front of the mirror and chuckled. It's interesting watching someone who doesn't suspect you know them. Jake's face showed interest, lips forming an attractive half-smile. But deep in his eyes, Brittany read disdain and mockery. After adjusting her hair and applying lipstick, Brittany headed back. Stepping into the dining area, she glanced again at Jake's table. To her surprise, he hadn't left yet. Apparently, he had decided to see this game through to the end. Brittany even knew how it would end. The man would silently convey how pathetic she was to think he could be interested in her. He would walk past her without even a glance, hoping to evoke in her a sense of inferiority and inadequacy. Brittany suddenly realized she was smirking at her own thoughts and that Jake could see her amusement. Understanding she was playing his game just as much as he was, Brittany shook her head, tossing an imaginary strand of hair over her shoulder, and looked at Jake. His smile was gone now. He was staring intensely at her, his eyes screaming without words. No way. Is it her? Brittany hurried back to her seat. How could she have become so engrossed that she lost control over her facial expressions? She glanced nervously at the neighboring table and became even more flustered. Jake had already stood up and was heading towards her. Communicating with him was not part of Brittany's plans. She was about to flee the cafe when the door burst open and a breathless Mark rushed in. Mom, he shouted from the doorway, paying no attention to the cafe patrons. Sorry, I really didn't mean to be late. In two strides, he reached Brittany's table and noisily sat down opposite her, grinning broadly. Hey, have you eaten yet? Out of the corner of her eye, the woman noticed Jake standing in the middle of the room, staring at the newcomer. There wasn't a hint of superiority or self-assurance on his face anymore. He looked like a lost and frightened child, trying to remember what to do in such situations. No, Mark, I've been waiting for you, the woman smiled happily. She had won this game. Satisfied with her victory, Brittany focused on chatting with her son. She rarely saw him, so she didn't want to spend this time thinking about a man she had been close to 20 years ago who had suddenly reappeared in her life. Why did he appear? Brittany scolded herself. It just happened. Mark was in his third year at the local Polytechnic Institute. He only came home during vacations. Brittany understood him perfectly. A small provincial town where his mother lived wasn't interesting to a young man, especially since there was little to do besides the cultural center and a few cafes. His friends had all moved to larger cities. A couple of times a year, Brittany visited her son herself, combining pleasant time with him and necessary shopping. Usually, it was for wardrobe updates. Unfortunately, provincial entrepreneurs couldn't, or perhaps didn't want to, provide women in her town with fashionable plus-size clothing. Everything Brittany managed to find in local boutiques didn't fit the concept of stylish at all. Of course, online stores helped, but her desire to see her son urged her to travel hundreds of kilometers. Typically, Brittany rented a small studio apartment for a few days, where Mark would join her. They tried to spend more time together and communicate a lot to make up for their time apart. 
Mark accompanied his mother to the shops, showing her new places she hadn't seen before, visiting newly opened establishments with her. On these days, Mark usually canceled all his meetings with friends and didn't linger at the Institute. After seeing her son off, Brittany would tidy up, wash the dishes left from breakfast, take a shower, and then go for a walk in the nearby park. She enjoyed these solitary walks. They allowed her to reflect on things she didn't have time to think about at home. Sometimes she would stop by a cafe to have a cup of coffee or wait for her son, who was about to arrive from the Institute. Today turned out to be like any other for Brittany. While she was out for a walk, Mark called to let her know that his last class was canceled and he would be arriving soon. They agreed to meet at a cafe on the edge of the park for lunch and then visit one of the new shopping centers. Over lunch, Brittany completely forgot about her unexpected encounter with her youthful love interest. However, it seemed he didn't want to follow her example. As Brittany and her son left the cafe and headed towards the nearest public transport stop, a car parked on the roadside opened its door and Jake stepped out. He walked towards them. Brittany, is that you? Jake blocked the path of the woman with the young man. You've mistaken me, Brittany smiled calmly, showing with her demeanor that she sympathized with the confused passerby. No. Jake exclaimed stubbornly and grabbed Brittany's hand. It's you, Brittany. Hey, man, Mark intervened, stepping between his mother and the approaching man. Get your hands off my mom. Without waiting for the man to comply, he abruptly pulled Jake's hand away from Brittany. I told you, it's not her. What's so hard to understand? Get out of here before I... The young man trailed off, gesturing with his broad shoulders. Sorry, Jake panicked unexpectedly, turned around, and quickly headed back to the car he came from. What was that about? Mark asked his mother as they rode in the minibus. You mean that man? Brittany decided not to hide from her son that she indeed knew Jake. We were together in my youth. We didn't part on good terms, so I don't want to renew our acquaintance. That's rough that you haven't forgiven him after all these years, Mark chuckled. Let's just say I'm convinced that people, especially men, don't change. Moreover, over the years, their bad qualities only get worse. Therefore, I'm not eager to communicate with someone who behaved like a jerk 20 years ago. I'm even afraid to imagine what he might be capable of now. You did great, though, sensing the situation correctly, praised Brittany's son. What's there to sense, chuckled Mark, flattered. Mom told some guy she's not Brittany, so it's in his best interest to believe that. Oh, aren't we intimidating? The woman hugged her son around the neck and tousled his unruly head. The rest of the day went wonderfully. Tired from shopping, Brittany and her son decided to go to the cinema, which was located in the same shopping center. After watching a movie, they had lunch at a small restaurant and returned home. In the morning, after seeing her son off to university and finishing all her usual chores, instead of taking a walk, Brittany decided to try on her new outfits again. After trying on dresses in front of the mirror to her heart's content, she felt a strong desire to show off one of them. Throwing on a coat over her dress, unbuttoned, she left the house. She walked slowly along the park alley, reflecting on yesterday's meeting. Of course, after the offense Jake had inflicted on her, he wasn't even worthy of a passing thought. But Brittany understood that she needed to realize that she truly felt nothing for him anymore, neither love nor hatred. You rarely meet such a smart girl for the first time. But there are girls in your class, they can't be stupid in such a specialty. Buying a term paper or a lab and then cramming it doesn't require much intelligence. Then from the young computer genius, who had great hopes and was already in his third year working for a reputable foreign company, such a compliment sounded like winning a Nobel Prize. 
She wasn't that smart if she didn't see the conceited, cruel narcissist in you, Brittany smirked. Mmm, you cook so deliciously. Can you make soup? Happily, that he appreciated her culinary talents, Brittany could only nod. Can you cook enough for a week? They were walking to the store, and Jake was buying everything needed for soup. In those moments, Brittany imagined they were a family, with their whole life ahead filled with quiet domestic happiness and mutual love. No, why marry now? I need to finish university first, then I want to do a PhD, and the company promised me an internship in England. A wife would be unnecessary, Jake shrugged when their mutual friends asked about their wedding plans, noting that the couple hardly ever parted. Brittany agreed with her chosen one. Indeed, it was too early to think about marriage. Jake was right. They needed to finish university and start working. She somehow didn't believe in his overseas business trip. Who in England would need such a brilliant student? They had plenty of their own. And yet, someone does need me, Brittany chuckled to herself again, continuing her stroll along the alley. Jake fit in perfectly with the society of Europeans constantly seeking their own benefit. Damn, I should have married you after all. Who knew they wouldn't let you in here? That, perhaps, was the first thing Jake didn't know. Brittany didn't meet the income level, status, or numerous other criteria required for prolonged stays in the country. Everything would have been solved if she had been officially married to Jake. I've gotten used to your cooking already. Here, I have to eat in cafes, and it's expensive. You know I can't cook anything besides scrambled eggs. Even doing laundry costs money here. I should have married you. Why didn't I listen to you? You did the right thing not to listen. You did well, Jake. Without realizing it, you didn't ruin my life. Thanks to you, at least for that. Brittany turned onto one of the paths leading to the fountain. It wasn't working yet, as spring hadn't fully arrived, but it was already attracting park goers. The woman wanted to find a free spot and sit for a while, watching the leisurely walking pigeons and little children chasing after them, causing the birds to lazily lift off the ground for a few meters and settle back down. I wonder, did you marry that other girl for a reason too? Brittany found an empty bench and sat down, but instead of watching the others relax, she found herself lost in her own memories again. Judging by the fact that there was someone else with you at the cafe, it seems so. Watch out. A little pigeon catcher couldn't stop in time and fell right onto Brittany, grabbing her knees with his hands. I'm sorry, I hope he didn't soil you. No, it's okay, Brittany smiled. Maybe Jake married impulsively? Brittany thought. Most likely, by that time, he must have finished his PhD and had a good job, but probably children weren't in his plans yet. But since it happened, maybe Jake calculated all possible outcomes with or without a child and decided that it wouldn't hurt him. I found a good private clinic. I'll pay for everything. Get ready, let's go. A couple of hours, and you'll be home. I'll even wait for you. Brittany shrugged. She still remembers that day with disgust towards herself. Shaking her head, she got up from the bench. It was time to go back. They didn't have any plans for the rest of the day, and she decided to treat her son to a home-cooked lunch. Thinking about what to cook, Brittany turned onto the path leading home and literally bumped into Jake coming towards her. Brittany stopped dead in her tracks, which gave her away completely. Jake smiled. And what was the point of this performance? Did you think I wouldn't recognize you like this? You didn't recognize me? You've changed a lot. I was hoping for that. But you recognized me right away. Otherwise, you wouldn't have started this game of peekaboo. 
It's strange that you played along with me, though you decided to have some fun. Jake didn't respond. He stood in front of Brittany, scrutinizing her from head to toe, rocking back and forth on his heels. Boldness has been added to your wit, the man finally remarked. And that's not the only thing that's been added to you. Brittany raised an eyebrow with interest. Was he intending to insult her by commenting on her appearance? Jake smirked. It suits you, though, he continued. Brittany became wary. If a man like Jake said that fullness suited a woman while he himself preferred very slim women, it wasn't without reason. It was time to say goodbye, but she didn't move. Why did you seek me out? Well, it's been so many years. I'm curious how you've lived all this time. Seriously? Why weren't you interested in this before? With your profession, I imagine it wouldn't be difficult to find out about someone's life. Jake stared intently at Brittany. Perhaps because I didn't need to. And now suddenly you have this need? To see you in person. My life is fine. I think that's enough for your knowledge about me. Brittany carefully walked around Jake and headed home at a calm pace. Is that my son? Subconsciously, Brittany had anticipated this question. Are you doing this on purpose? I thought you understood last time that I don't want a child. What are you hoping for now? That I'll pay for another operation? Or that I'll support you and the child? Or simply give you money? She had been ready to deliver a contemptuous what makes you think I could have a child with someone like you. But a sudden thought about her place changed her plans. This is my child, she declared with a hint of pride, noticing with pleasure how Jake's eyes widened. You know I can easily find out everything, the man nervously shouted. Brittany smiled and calmly approached Jake again. Stopping very close to him, she lifted her head and looked him straight in the eye with a mocking gaze. Why do you even care? Or is your estate so vast that it extends to all heirs? She took a step back and added disdainfully, Get a grip, Jake. We don't need anything from you. Seems like you're the one who's most fond of yourself. Brittany turned around and headed back towards home. A few seconds later, she heard footsteps catching up with her. Jake walked silently beside her until they reached the park exit. Brittany, Jake stopped her, catching her hand. We need to meet and have a serious talk. We have nothing to talk about, Jake, Brittany replied gently, delicately freeing her hand. No. We do, the man insisted stubbornly. Brittany shook her head without saying anything and quickly crossed the road. I'll call, she heard him say as she walked away. How is Adam doing? The unexpected question from her son about the man Brittany was seeing caught her off guard. Why are you suddenly interested in that, she asked. Well, you've been together for a while now, and I think he's a good guy. Besides, it's been a long time for you to be alone, Mark replied earnestly. Why? I'm content with everything. And I'm not alone, I have you, even if you're far away, Brittany countered. Mom, Mark looked at her seriously, you know that someday I'll have my own family and won't be able to spend as much time with you as I do now. And even now, we don't spend much time together. Do you have someone? Brittany smiled. Someone special? Well, yeah, actually. I'm seeing a girl, I like her. And if things keep going well, I think I'd want you to have someone too. Why don't you want to marry Adam? Doesn't he ask? He does, he just. I'm used to things the way they are. Well, maybe it's time to change that. All right. I promise to think about it. The next morning, as Brittany walked through the park, she pondered over her son's words. She had been with Adam for almost ten years now. 
He had courted her persistently before they became lovers. He had proposed almost immediately, but Brittany had firmly declined. Past negative relationship experiences had made her reluctant to live with a man again. Adam had accepted her decision but never lost hope. Brittany was happy with him. Over the years, he had proven his love. He was gentle, caring, a wonderful lover, generous with gifts, and always ready to help. Brittany knew she would be happy with Adam, but she couldn't bring herself to commit. As if sensing her thoughts, Adam called. Hi, darling. Sorry to bother you with a call. Before her trip to visit her son, Brittany always asked Adam not to call her so as not to distract from her time with Mark. But it's really important, Adam insisted. It's okay, Mark, I'm glad to hear from you. Brittany truly enjoyed hearing his voice. But why did she forbid him to call? What's going on? she asked. I miss you, Mark replied. Surprised and touched by his response, Adam forgot about his important matter and began talking about his feelings. Is this your important matter? Brittany chuckled. Oh, sorry. The thing is, I'm finalizing a deal with a buyer who happens to be where you are right now. He can't come himself, so I'll go. Maybe we can meet somewhere, and we can ride back together. Great idea. Brittany exclaimed. She suddenly realized how much she missed Adam, too. But why just meet? I thought you planned to stay with us. I thought you wouldn't want me to intrude. Adam's voice sounded disheartened, prompting Brittany to laugh again. You won't be intruding. When should we expect you? Tomorrow morning. It seemed Adam was so happy he was speechless. Great, I'll be waiting for you, Brittany said, giving him their address. Wow. Do you have a lover? Unexpectedly, Jake appeared nearby. I never thought you'd stoop to eavesdropping on other people's phone calls, Brittany chuckled nervously at Jake's sudden appearance. I didn't mean to interrupt your lovey-dovey chat. Is this your husband? Are you not talking to me because of him, wondering if Mark is really my son? Afraid they'll expose your little secret? Jake sneered. Brittany stopped, turned to Jake, placed her hand gently on his chest, and looked him in the eyes tenderly. You really didn't think much of me twenty years ago. If I were that clever, I would have noticed right away what a despicable person you are. Giving him a slight shove in the chest, Brittany turned away and briskly walked off. To her surprise and relief, Jake didn't chase after her. But her relief was short-lived. Just as she entered the apartment she was renting, the phone rang. The number was unknown. If you don't want your husband to find out you're raising someone else's child, you'll meet with me. Get lost. Brittany smirked and hung up. After a moment's thought, she added the number to her blacklist. A knock on the door interrupted Brittany and her son's breakfast. Motioning for Mark to stay put, Brittany went to answer it. I've missed you so much. Adam embraced her tightly and started kissing her passionately. Good morning to you too, Adam, Brittany replied with amusement while Mark looked on mockingly. Oh, Mark, sorry, I thought you were at college. Adam reluctantly let go of Brittany but kept holding her hand. I was planning to leave in half an hour anyway, but I can go now, Mark grinned. No, no, Adam hastily objected, finally releasing Brittany. He then handed her a bouquet of flowers he'd been holding the whole time. Sorry again, please forgive me. Come on, Mark. Brittany said, amused. Mark got up from the table and walked over to Adam, extending his hand. After shaking hands, Mark invited him, join us. You must be hungry after the ride. You bet, Adam agreed, glancing at Brittany. She blushed, his look conveyed a hunger that Mark wasn't implying. 
Fortunately, Adam sat down at the table at that moment and didn't notice anything. Would you mind if I invite you both to dinner tonight? Adam asked after breakfast was finished. Of course not, Mark replied for both of them. Just can I bring someone with me? Mark, Brittany gave him a reproachful look. It's all right, Brittany, Adam reassured her, touching her hand. I'd be more than happy if Mark introduces us to his special someone. She would be your girlfriend, right? Did I get that right? He looked at the young man. Yeah, I'd like you to meet her, Mark agreed and started getting ready. Mom, he addressed Brittany, winking at her, then left the apartment. What should you think about? Adam enveloped Brittany in his arms again. I can't think of anything while you're hugging me, she smiled, suddenly realizing how much she missed his embrace all these days. Instead of replying, Adam kissed her lips again. You'll be late for your appointment, Brittany whispered, secretly hoping he wouldn't stop. Adam fulfilled her hopes. They walked out together. After seeing Adam off to his car with a kiss goodbye, Brittany waved and headed for a walk in the park. Jake was already waiting for her at the entrance. What a touching scene. I wonder if you'll say your goodbyes just as tenderly when he finds out he's not the father. Jake sidled up next to her. So he still hasn't figured out that Adam isn't my husband? Brittany thought to herself, surprised, but said aloud, what do you want? I've already stated my desires. We need to talk and sort everything out, Jake replied. There's nothing to discuss. If Mark is my son, I want him to know. Trust me, he won't be thrilled about that relationship. When he finds out what awaits him, he'll be happy. And your other children, will they be thrilled to share? Brittany stopped and looked at Jake with pity. Do you mean none of your girlfriends made you a father? Or did you resist until now and suddenly decided it's time? So what does that have to do with us? The moment you whistle with your wallet, all the girls within sight will flock to you. You'll be able to pick the perfect one to be the mother of your children. Are you mocking me? Jake realized. His gaze suddenly became wistful. All my girlfriends, as you put it, tried so hard to starve themselves to please me, but couldn't bear my child. I sympathize, Brittany shrugged and continued walking. She did feel a bit sorry for Jake. Maybe we could go to a cafe? Jake unexpectedly suggested. Have a cup of coffee? If I'm inviting you somewhere, naturally, I'll pay. But if you insist, then I apologize, and it's your treat. Brittany chuckled and agreed. If only I had known back then how it would all turn out. Jake continued the conversation they had started in the park when their order arrived. I wouldn't have sent you for the operation, Jake said. Brittany looked mockingly at him. No, of course you wouldn't have married me, but you could have helped. After all, it's your child too. Even though you didn't want kids. I didn't want them so much that I was ready to kill you if you insisted, Brittany began to get angry. That's what you deserve. People like you shouldn't even think about reproducing. And now you need children only because there's no one else to leave your inheritance to, Jake retorted. Well, I'm not going to give everything I've earned with my own mind to the state, Brittany replied. So what's the problem? There are plenty of opportunities now for a single man to have a child. And anyway, if we hadn't met... How would you solve this issue? Jake asked. You see, after a very bad illness, I became practically infertile. The chance of me having children is very small. And then suddenly you and Mark, it's better than a distant hope, Jake explained. We've only known each other for two months. What about marriage? Brittany questioned. My child won't grow up without a father. And besides, I love you. Why wait? 
I've always dreamed of having a big family. You make my dreams come true, Jake declared. This conversation, which took place many years ago, still warmed Brittany's heart. Back then, shattered and empty, she wanted to disappear from this world and never return. Leon's words brought her back to life. She ran into his arms after Jake's cruel words about her being too mercenary and calculated that he saw through her and knew she only wanted money and that she was willing to do anything to get it. It was after these words that Brittany shouted at Jake that she was pregnant again. And what did he do? He simply dismissed her. To help her forget the betrayal of her beloved, her friend Kimmy took her to a club where Brittany, after drinking cocktails all night, spent the evening embracing a guy named Leon. And in the morning, she woke up in his apartment, mentally scolding herself for her inappropriate behavior and cursing Jake for bringing her to this. Brittany left the unfamiliar apartment, pushing the incident out of her mind. But Leon unexpectedly found her, and they started a relationship. Do you even realize how repulsive this all sounds? Brittany pushed aside her half-empty coffee cup with disgust, got up from the table, and tossed a few bills. I couldn't care less about what you do. Mark will never consider you a father. We'll see about that, she heard him call after her. To calm down, Brittany returned home and lounged in the bath for a long time. By the time Mark and Adam returned, she had completely calmed down and was recalling the morning meeting as a silly misunderstanding. With Adam's arrival, she suddenly thought she had probably been wrong to want revenge on Jake. He was already punished enough for what he did to her. The only thing that surprised her was why he hadn't figured it out yet with all his abilities. As the evening approached its end, Mark and his girlfriend announced they were planning to go to the movies. Adam suggested Brittany take a stroll through the evening city. But just as they were about to have dessert, a well-dressed man approached their table, greeting them with a sly smile and a vengeful look at Brittany. A skinny girl loitered behind him, her silly face frozen in confusion. Mind if I join you? Jake asked without waiting for an invitation, gesturing to the waiter who promptly brought another chair. Seated, the man surveyed the group. A quiet family dinner? Hey, dude, you've been showing up in front of us a lot lately, Mark squinted, clenching his fists. You like my mom or something? Trying to hit on her? Or is this how you make a living? Wait, Mark, Adam touched the guy's shoulder. We'll sort this out. Do we know each other? He asked Jake. With you? Jake shrugged disdainfully. No, of course not, but I'm quite familiar with your wife. His smile turned lewd. Although she wasn't always so well endowed. Jake, you look pathetic. Brittany shook her head. Cut it out and focus on your girlfriend. You'd be surprised, Brittany. I'd go for you too, despite your figure. It seemed Jake enjoyed provoking negative emotions. All right, Adam stood up from his seat. I think you've planned quite the spectacle, and whatever role you take, you'll play it out. But this scene doesn't suit any genre. Let's go. Adam placed several bills on the table, offered his hand to Brittany, helping her to stand. He nodded to Mark and headed towards the exit. Jake had no choice but to follow the two couples. His companion, with a blatantly silly expression, brought up the rear. They walked along the restaurant building and turned the corner, finding themselves in a small courtyard. Here's the spot, Adam said, looking expectantly at Jake. Think you've got everything under control? Jake smirked. A contemptuous grin spread across his face. Jake, calm down, Brittany said calmly. You're completely wrong right now. Wrong? Jake chuckled artificially. In what way, I wonder. His expression turned cruel. I warned you, Brittany. If you don't do as I want, you'll regret it. 
Brittany shook her head and sighed heavily. Playing out her revenge, she never imagined Jake would take it all so seriously. For a moment, she wondered if there was something wrong with him mentally. And suddenly, she felt afraid. Maybe you could explain what you want? Adam interjected. He needs a good beating, Mark stepped towards the man. Don't rush it, kid, Jake smirked, holding his hand out. You're just not aware of your mommy's youthfulness. Well, I figured out she dated a loser like you, Mark retorted disdainfully. We can chalk that up to her youth and naivety. What, are you trying to hit on her again? What makes you think she'd be thrilled by such a suitor? Me? Hit on Brittany? Jake laughed artificially. She's been out of my league for a while now. So, if we're talking about a couple, well, you get it. Listen, Adam couldn't hold back, stepping up to Jake and grabbing him by the collar. You're talking about my woman here. Watch your words. Mark, it's okay. Brittany touched Mark's arm. He's saying this out of bitterness for his failed life. He's just now realizing he's not wanted by anyone. Not even for money. Except maybe by someone like her. Brittany nodded towards the bewildered girl standing nearby. Adam let go of Jake and stepped back, but Jake wasn't backing down. And what will you say, Adam, about Mark not being your son? Jake's face lit up with anticipation of imminent revenge. And what should I say? Adam shrugged. It's not uncommon for a woman who was married before to have a child. What's bothering you? So he's not your son? Jake's expression turned bewildered. No. Jake's gaze darted around. This conversation wasn't going the way he imagined. Do you have everything? Brittany interrupted. We wouldn't want to spend the rest of the evening in this alley. We actually had other plans. She took Adam's arm and gestured to her son. Let's go. No, stop. Jake screamed hysterically. I'm not done. Why are you so relentless? Mark sighed loudly, turning around and clenching his fists again. Married, you say? Jake shouted maliciously. To whom, I wonder. Not to me? Oh, heaven forbid. My goodness. Brittany chuckled, squeezing Adam's hand tighter as both he and her son were losing patience. I had a wonderful husband, unfortunately deceased. Whom you tricked into raising my child? A tense silence hung in the air. Satisfied with the effect he had caused, Jake's expression shifted from angry to arrogantly superior. Brittany sighed heavily, released Adam's hand, and stepped closer to Jake. To be honest, when I wanted to get back at you a bit, I didn't expect you to take it all so literally. Knowing your distrustful nature towards everyone, I thought you'd immediately verify and double-check everything. But you didn't live up to my expectations. What are you talking about? Jake began to suspect something was amiss. Did you really think I'm such a fool that I'd have a child with a man who once tried to kill her own child? You did that then. No, I wasn't pregnant. I said that to spite you. You're lying. Mark is my son. He looks like me. How? He has. Jake looked at Mark. My eyes. We have the same eye color. He's smart like me. Seriously? No, this can't be. Jake shifted his gaze between Brittany and Mark. Mark, give me your passport, Brittany requested. Her son handed her the document. Look. She opened it to the page with the photo. See the date? Jake stared at the numbers, despair beginning to show on his face. I couldn't have been pregnant for a whole year, could I? You. I'll kill you. Jake lunged at Brittany, 
but Adam and Mark stopped him. Realizing he had lost, Jake suddenly collapsed onto the pavement and started sobbing. Giving him a pitying glance, Brittany once again took Adam's arm and led him away from the scene, followed by Mark and his girlfriend. I suggest we cancel any further outings and sit down with a glass of good wine at home, Adam suggested. Fully agree, Mark nodded. Such an adventure requires thorough discussion. Mom, you're incredible. Your revenge is pure perfection, Mark exclaimed admirably after Brittany shared the story about Jake. I wasn't even planning to get back at him, honestly. Just said a few things out of spite. And he, not only did he take it all to heart, but he didn't even bother to verify my words, even though he had the means to, Brittany explained. Still, Mark remarked, So, everything he's been striving for all these years will likely end up going to the state? Mark's girlfriend interjected, Yeah, he fought so hard for it, and now it'll benefit the society he despises, Mark confirmed. Let's change the subject, guys, Adam broke in. I'm tired of hearing about this unpleasant person. Agreed, Brittany said. He's not even worth remembering. Let's drink to us, to being good people, she smiled broadly. With pleasure, Adam raised his glass. And I'm very glad to be in the company of good people. And don't you want to live in this society? Mark looked at Adam. You know, Mark, I'm all for it. Adam smiled and glanced at Brittany. Now is the perfect time to bring up this question. You think so? Adam looked uncertainly at Mark and then quickly got up. He reached into his coat pocket, knelt down in front of Brittany, and pulled out something. Brittany, I've tried to propose to you before, but you declined, saying you prefer to be free. I want to propose to you again and promise not to encroach on your freedom in any way, Adam paused, looking into her eyes. I think I'm ready for you to limit my freedom, Brittany smiled. I agree. Hooray! Mark shouted, hugging his girlfriend, then jumping over to his mother and Adam. Just don't drag it out. We'll go to the courthouse tomorrow and file immediately, Adam joyfully replied. And you'll move in with me right away, Brittany added, smiling, and was immediately embraced by Adam. I guess we'll leave you too, Mark interrupted their kiss. Don't hold back on anything. One of the company's lead programmers, Jake, unexpectedly submitted a resignation letter. As we've learned, he plans to move to a third world country and spend the rest of his days there. Brittany and Adam exchanged glances. After a quiet family dinner, they sat in front of the TV, as usual, choosing a movie to watch. While the couple deliberated on their choice, the news came on. Wow, that really got to him, Adam shook his head. Oh well, good riddance, Brittany waved her hand. But thanks to meeting him, I realized that you're a treasure worth holding onto with both hands. So why aren't you holding onto me? Adam smirked playfully, embracing Brittany. Already, she whispered, kissing her husband. Watching the movie took a back seat for the moment. 